Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this Golang tutorial, we're going to talk about explicit versus implicit variable creation slash declaration slash assignment. Now I know that sounds like a mouthful and a lot of big words. I promise you it's not that bad. Um, these are just the best ways to really define what I'm trying to say is implicit versus explicit. So if we look at this that we've done here in the last video on line six, what this would be called or what I would categorize this as as an explicit variable declaration. Now, the reason it's explicit is because I have explicitly defined and stated what type this variable should be. I've said it should be a U in 16. Now, we actually don't need to do this when we define variables. We can and we should, but we don't have to. What I can actually do is do this. I can say var number equals 260. And what this means is tell Golang to implicitly define what type this variable should be. Now, the reason we call this implicit is because this variable still has a type. In fact, this will likely be the same type as it was before, but we are telling Golang to take a guess at what the type is based on what we put on the right side of this um, equal sign. So we're pretty much saying whatever we have on this side, make this variable that type. That's kind of the basics behind it. Now, if I go ahead and do like 260 here, well, the type that it would guess would be a string, right? Which means I couldn't add five to it anymore. That wouldn't work. But if I put the number two, then it would guess the type of int, right? Or u int or whatever. It would guess something like that. Now, the only issue with doing this is sometimes you don't want it to implicitly guess the type because its guess might be wrong, right? So you make the variable here, but maybe later in the program, you want to add a crazy large number to it, or you want to make it negative, or you want to do something like that. But since you haven't explicitly defined the type, you may not know what type this variable actually is. And when you try to do something to it, you might run into an issue because the type that Golang guessed is not the correct type that you actually wanted. Now, in 99.9% .9 of scenarios, it's fine to not define the type. Uh, and I'll show you a bunch of reasons and, and other ways where we can not define the type and make this a lot faster. But just know that sometimes you want to define it and you should try to figure out when those times are, right? So this is, again, what's called implicit because Golang just guesses the type. And in fact, to show you the type, I'm going to do something that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, but I'm going to say fmt.printf. This stands for print formatting, I believe. And I'm actually going to put percent capital T comma number. Now, what this does is give me the type of the variable. So if I actually go here and go go run tutorial, let's see what type that Golang guessed this variable number actually is. OK, so it guesses that it is type int. So it doesn't go ahead and do the like 64 or 32. It just puts int whenever you put some kind of number here. right? So if I do like 2000 and we run this again, this should give us the same value of int. Let's have a look. It gives us int. Now, if I do like 2000.98 and then I run this, so let's go I actually have to save that first and then up arrow run. What type do we get? We get float 64. So that is kind of the basics on how that works. It implicitly just guesses what type it should be. Now, that is one of the other ways to write a variable, right? Is to do something like that. Now, another thing that we can do is actually just type the name of the variable and we can use what's known as the expression assignment operator, which is also called the walrus operator, which is a colon equal sign and then just put the value that we want. So what this is saying is do the same thing we did before, just omit the var keyword. So we have this number. That's what we want to name our variable and let's assign it equal to in this case, let's put six, like that's the value we're going to do and let Golang guess what type this is. That's what we're saying. So if I save this and I run it again, we should see that this is type int. Let's have a look. There we go. We get type int and that works. So this is the fastest, easiest way to declare variables is to type the variable name colon equal and then whatever variable or whatever data you want to store. But just note that I cannot do something like this now, right? I cannot make number equal to str of a type string. And notice we're even getting the error here because it cannot use string as type int in assignment. That's the basics behind this. Now, same goes like this. If I do hello, now if I save, this works fine. But if I change number down here to be five, this is not okay because again, we cannot assign the value five because this variable type is string. In fact, this expression here is the exact same as saying var 
number string equals hello. It's just a shortcut. And we're getting a squiggly line here just because we cannot define the same variable again. So once I make it a string, I cannot redefine it and recreate that variable, which means doing something like num number colon equals five here is not allowed because we already instantiated it. We already created that variable. So that is the difference between implicit and explicit. That That's the basics behind it. Uh, now, if we look at uh, percent T of this, let's just have a look uh, like that. Go run and string. So that is pretty much the difference. That's what I wanted to illustrate with to you with those variables. So you do num colon equals something like that. Now, an interesting thing to look at is actually what happens when we create a variable, but we don't give it a value. That's actually interesting. So let's um, go back to fmt.print line. So fmt.print ln like that. Um, and actually, let's define a few Boolean variables and stuff like that and see what they are. So number colon equals true. This is fine. This is a Boolean type number colon equals false. This is a Boolean type. Notice that if I add a capital F here, it doesn't highlight in purple, which means this is nothing. We don't understand what false with a capital F means. Uh, and I'm trying to think of anything else I could show you here with some different types. So actually, let me show you what default types are. So if I create a variable and let's call it number and let's make it uh, uint 64. Okay, that's the type I want to make it. Now, if I print out the value of number, what do you think we're going to get? Because I haven't assigned it anything, right? I've just said we have this variable. It's this type, but I haven't given it a value. So what value do I actually get? Well, that's a good question, Tim. Let's look and we get the value zero. So actually, by default, when we do something like this, all of these types have a default value and this number will be set to that default value until it changes. So now let's look at another example. If I say var, um, I'm going to call it bool is actually of type boolean like that. Uh, actually, let's let's call it bl and then bool because that's the type. Sorry. So the type is bool, not boolean. My apologies. So var bl bool. And now I go ahead and I just print out bl. What do you think that default type is going to be? Now, remember, Boolean is true or false. Uh, but what do you think the default type is going to be for that? Is it going to be something? Is it going to be undefined? Well, let's look. The default type is false. So pretty much if you wanted to determine the default types, you just do this, print out the value and you'll see it. But I just wanted you to realize that all of these types have a default value that will be assigned to the variable if you don't actually give it the value. So obviously now if I go down here and say BL equals true uh, like that, then BL will be equal to true. So I can I can run this and we'll see that. But if I didn't like before, then it was equal to false. So that's the idea. Um, so that's pretty much been this video. There's not much more to talk about. I just really wanted to go over implicit versus explicit, the difference, and then show you some other things with default types and just more nuances with variables. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.